to you live from the Vegas Video Network Studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's golf and other four-letter words. And now your host, you've heard him on ESPN, Fox Sports, and Sirius XM Radio, Mr. Dennis Silvers. Whoa! Huge. Huge. We keep busting them in, folks. Glad to have uh, everybody. Welcome, everybody, to uh, another edition of Golf and Other Four-Letter Words, as noted, right here on Vegas Video Network. Glad to have you hanging with us for the next 30 jam-packed quick minutes. Got another wonderful, wonderful show on tap. Have a young lady making her first appearance here on the show. You're going to like her very much. Uh, Very, very interesting lady. Uh, very, very interesting background that we'll talk a little bit about as we get into the show. So uh, I guess let me uh, introduce this young lady without further ado. I'm sure a lot of you out there viewing the show already know her. She's pretty well known. She's a professional mixed martial artist and also avid golfer, by the way. Of course, that's one of the reasons we have her on the show. Give it up uh, for Kim uh, Couture. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, nickname of Sugar Free, why is that? How'd that come about? Well, when Because you look like you're the real deal. <laughs> sweet, you know, and the, and the stuff. Very sweet. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, I ran Extreme Couture, uh, you know, with my ex-husband, uh, Randy. Uh-huh. And, um In the gym, everybody would, I was always so busy and in such a rush, they would ask me questions. I was very busy blunt and very quick to answer and so they got they gave me the nickname because I didn't sugarcoat anything good just well that's like, okay sugar free point. yes that's a good way to be I think yes. I think absolutely. saves time <laughs> saves time absolutely we're gonna have a great show with Kim we're gonna talk about her golf uh, golfing exploits we're gonna talk about her professional career and as they say she's had a very very interesting background uh, before she moved to Las Vegas and got involved in MMA we'll uh, Talk about it also, that also. Let me do a little uh, housekeeping right now. Of course, we have email if you want to send us uh, any questions, ideas, suggestions, whatever it might be on your mind, just uh, simple. Golf at VegasVideoNetwork.com. We also have a toll free number, doesn't cost you a quarter to uh, phone us up 1 866 966 4599. We have live chat, of course. Just go to our homepage, VegasVideoNetwork.com, hit that little live chat icon and uh, send us your information or questions or comments, again, whatever you like. We're seen all over the place. You know, we're on iTunes, we're on YouTube a lot because we're a YouTube partner, so all of the shows on the network are seen on uh, YouTube extensively. Uh, Also on Roku TV, which is very cool, and also Friday Night Features, Every Friday night from 8 to 12 midnight on AM 1400 KSHP, they re-air all of the uh, video portions of all of the shows on the network. So if you're driving back from the golf course to the golf course to dinner, going to work out like Kim does all the time, turn on uh, AM 1400 KSHOP and uh, take a listen uh, to the shows, okay? Also, I just want to uh, get this out of the way. I want to mention uh, one of our strategic partners, Golfer's Guide Magazine, largest golf publication in the country, published regionally, features all of the very cool golf courses uh, in your area, wherever you happen to live in whatever part of the country. They've got articles on golf instruction, golf retails, uh, a whole lot of stuff. Find it here locally. Just simply go to lasvegas.golfersguide.com. And as you can see on the screen, they're kind enough to uh, stream our show on their home page. So again, lasvegas.golfersguide.com. So we want to thank them for their participation. All right, let's get into our very first segment on golf and other four-letter words. And for you regular viewers, you know what it is. For you new viewers, we call it Tournament Scorecard. And here it is. All right, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for uh, being with us. She's Kim. I'm Dennis, tournament scorecard. Kim, Mark Wilson wins the uh, newly sponsored Humana Challenge, which used to be the old uh, Bob Hope uh, tournament. 
Uh, you man a challenge by two shots over three other players for his fifth PGA Tour victory. Okay, so we got to congratulate Mark. Won about a million bucks, played well, but I've got to ask you, he shoots, the tournament, by the way, let me just preface this, used to be five days. They yeah. cut it down to four days, okay? Four days, he shoots 24 under par. Now, he's a good player, obviously, but th does that give you a sense that he's really playing super good or the courses might be a little bit too easy for these guys? Because the second place guys were 22 under par. And that's seriously deep for a tournament that's four days. What do you think? Probably easy for them. Yeah. I mean, they play a rotation of three different courses. Okay, and they're Which not... Which courses? Uh, I knew you were going to ask me, and I forgot, <laughs> I forgot the name. Three different courses. Take my, take my uh, word for it. But, I mean, that's, that's going pretty deep. I mean, uh, these guys are good, but I, I don't know. You know, I know I've mentioned it before. I know people that go to golf tournaments like to see these guys go low, like to see these guys make a lot of birdies. That's all well and good. I like to see them just struggle a little bit, <laughs> maybe on some of the holes, to eke out a par, and that would be good. Right. You know, you yeah, agree? I agree. Wow. Anyway, here's another thing rubs me the wrong way. Humana Challenge, that's not the name of the tournament in its entirety. It's the Humana Challenge in partnership with the Clinton Foundation. Now, President Clinton, I guess, was responsible for getting Humana to come in, step in, be the title sponsor. So I guess, you know, he's got to get a little bit of shot on it. But uh, but everything it does, it's, you know, it's uh, name of tournaments are getting longer and longer and longer. Humana Challenge in partnership with the Clinton Foundation, it's, I don't know, it's not easy to say. You think that's good? They need or, to abbreviate it. They need to abbreviate it. <laughs> I, I agree with you. They, it, they need to uh, abbreviate it. Uh, by the way, some bad news. Uh, our locals here, Bill Lundy, Charlie Hoffman, who won this tournament uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, Scott Piercy failed to make the cut. So uh, our condolences to them. I mentioned this tournament used to be five days with the amateurs. They finally cut it down to four days like they have in the Justin Lake Shriners tournament here in Las Vegas. What do you think about that? You like four days better than five days? Because that's becoming really a, a dinosaur. I think there's only one tournament left in the country that, uh, or two that might be five days. What do you feel about it? I would think four days would be better. Five might be too long. I mean, unless... Unless these guys and everybody coming to watch and support them have nothing else going on, but yeah. usually with everybody's schedules these days and yeah. everything, even the support team that's putting it all together, it seems yeah. like four would be easier on everybody. Yeah, uh, I agree. And, and, you know, one of the other big reasons for it, uh, as cold as it might sound, and, you know, and I'm, not, and I'm not telling you anything out of school here, golf professionals, tour professionals do not, do not like playing with amateurs. I don't care how good they are, it's just something that goes against their grain. And I think that's a big part of it, too. And sometimes you can't blame them. <laughs> Some of these guys suck. I mean, you know, they're right. bad. Right. But they pay the freight, they pay the money, and that goes towards the prize money. And, and so that's the way it is. Speaking of that, real quickly, uh, a guy by the name of Brendan Grace, who uh, is a professional on the European tour, did something for some reason that's very rare on the European tour as opposed to our tour. Uh, last week, just uh, yesterday, he uh, won the Volvo Championship, and he won the prior week, so that's like two in a row. And like I say, for some reason, that's a much rarer occurrence on the European tour than it is on the American PGA Tour. I have no uh, reason why. Got any thoughts? I don't. I haven't followed the European tour. I can barely keep up with my life. Yeah. Do you follow women's golf, by the way? I don't. Uh, okay. Well, I, I don't either. So that makes <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> That's horrible. That's horrible. So that no, that makes. Uh, not enough hours in the day. That, uh, that, makes, that makes two of us. All right. I'll tell you what. Kim and I are going to step away. We're going to take a short, short station ID. And when we come back, we're going to have our second segment. It's a real fun one. So stick around for birdies and bogeys. We're back with you right after this. Traditional media believes that after about three minutes, you'll tune out. Most Vegas media companies think if it doesn't jiggle, you won't tune in. At the Vegas Video Network, we think both are wrong. 
The Vegas Video Network is the first and only live online broadcast network that specializes in insider news and expert views about Vegas. We combine great storytelling with the ability to watch when and where you want on your computer, mobile device, or television. Discover the real Las Vegas. Visit VegasVideoNetwork.com. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Kim Couture, Dennis Silvers, golf and other four-letter words, birdies and bogeys. Kim, I'm going to give you some scenarios. Want to, you know, you tell me if you think it's a birdie, if it's a bogey, a double bogey, or whatever, and and why you why you think so. Okay, you certainly know who Phil Mickelson is. Mm -hmm. All right, Phil says he's going to be skipping next month World Golf Championship Accenture Match Play. Uh, because he has a conflict with his uh, children's spring break. Uh, he said he added last week's Humana tournament that just finished uh, to make up for missing this particular tournament, uh, which he has skipped uh, on two prior occasions. Uh, obviously, they'd love him to play. It's going to hurt the sponsorship a little bit, but he's uh, made a commitment to his kids. What do you think, birdie or bogey? Birdie. Very why? Good for him. Okay, I knew you were going to say that <laughs> because you're a mother. Yes. Right? Yes, and it's it's very easy for professional athletes to forget their family and especially their kids. They kind of get put on the back burner, yeah. and you know that stuff's important. So yeah, it is, mm -hmm. and and he's very much a he's very much a family guy. So you know. That, but I that, can't that, imagine how bad it would hurt the sponsorship. Everybody's probably going, Oh, oh no! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't you go a week later, Phil, or whatever? We'll even pay for the trip, Phil. But no, he's you know that's <laughs> that's the way he is, and I give and I give him uh, credit for that. All right, former this is a little weird. Former PGA player Steve Thomas, a guy that nobody's really ever heard of except for his mother, <laughs> uh, was charged with traveling. Uh, to seduce an underage girl and also charged with using a computer to entice a legal guardian or parent to commit sex acts with an underage girl. Uh, also arrested in the sex uh, sting was a swim instructor, an eighth grade school teacher, and eight college students. Wow. Birdie or bogey? Triple bogey. Triple bogey. <laughs> up, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that horrible. This guy, by the way, Steve Thomas, and the reason you haven't heard from him, I think he played in one Champions Tour event, and years and years ago, I think he played in only one official PGA Tour event, and then the guy, I don't know, was off doing something, but uh, uh, just terrible, isn't it? Terrible. And it, all these stories keep popping up. I mean... I guess, thank God for social media, social media because they're catching all these guys. They're catching all these guys, yeah. And, you know, it, it's terrible for anybody to do it. But the reason, you know, obviously we're talking about it because the guy has a golf connection. So uh, he's arrested. All the other people are arrested. So, uh, uh, you know, he's in a world of hurt, as he should be. And, and uh, good luck, Steve Thomas. But it is the first time I've ever heard something like this coming up in the golf world. Yeah, me too. You know? Me too, as a matter of fact. All right, no real surprise here, Kim. Tiger Woods said in an interview with ESPN recently that he was not very pleased that Hank Haney, his former golf instructor, has written a book about Tiger. He called it being unprofessional uh, that Hank Haney would release it uh, just before the Masters that's coming up in a, in a couple of months and because of that, because of the timing, uh, Haney's gotten a lot of press uh, because of that. So, but take it, they're not friends anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. So, birdie your bogey on on Tiger's part. Uh, there's two sides of this. Okay. I, I say bogey. I say you know it's it, it, if they're not friends anymore. The, of course, he's vindictively doing that at, yeah. the, at that precise time. Yeah. But on the other hand, you know, if you don't have anything to hide, then you, should, you don't have anything to worry about. So, you know, what is he so worried about that's going to be in this book? So. Well, I agree, I agree with you. I agree. You know, they did spend six years together. Uh, the guy was playing the best golf of his life, but, uh, you know, they got sideways and, and he split. Uh, and, and on the other hand, in defense of Hank, I mean, 
people, uh, you know, want to make a living. They want to make money. Right. This is one way to do it because Haney's one of the best self-promoters of any top golf instructor on there. But uh, I guess, you know, Tiger thinks it's a little bit hurtful and, and whatever. So Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I like but, Tiger. I respect him as a golfer. So Yeah, absolutely. All right. Long hitting Bubba Watson, already a, an iconic figure on the PGA Tour, uh, just purchased the original General Lee car from the Dukes of Hazard <laughs> TV series for a mere $110,000 uh, at a car auction. Uh, he calls it his dream car. So <laughs> I would love to see Bubba Watson drive up to his next PGA Tour event in the General Lee, you know, park it next to all these jets that these guys, you know, come into the golf course with. But uh, uh, birdie or bogey for, for Bubba? Birdie. It's birdie, absolutely. But it's didn't that thing rack a couple times? <laughs> you know, yeah. But, you know, they have... Does they still run? They do have uh, replicas, yeah, you know, that course. people buy too. But this was supposed to be the original. And uh, it just fits, you know, the General Lee, Dukes of Howard's, with, and, and a guy named, by the name of Bubba buying this car. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, what could, be a, what could be a better scenario? You know what I mean? So, yeah. Anyway. All right. I'll tell you what. We're going to step away again, take a, another short station ID. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking to Kim. We have no handicap helper uh, segment, but we've got something just as good. And we're going to talk to Kim about a myriad of stuff. So uh, stay with us. We're going to run this for you. We're back right after this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Phillips from Talk Tales, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. And if you stop by the studio, our producer Scott's going to buy everybody a drink. <laughs> All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we've got some questions for Kim Couture that uh, I think are going to be interesting to you. I know they're interesting to me. So uh, here we go, Kim. Uh, first of all, what brought you uh, into the game of golf? Anybody responsible for it, or did you just kind of latch on? Well, when I became a casino host in this town, I was a host for about six years, I learned very quickly that everybody golfed. And the greatest way of getting out of work was to go golfing with your VIPs. Well, okay, <laughs> that is, that's perfect, yeah. <laughs> I know I loved my job, so I would usually golf all morning and then work all night in the casinos. So. Okay, pretty good. And you played some nice courses. You told me you were at it. Mm -hmm. the creek a lot. I played, Red obviously, Wins, right. Wins course. Uh, that was great. Um, and, yeah, I've played about 35 courses out here in Vegas. Nice. And around the world. I've, I try to make it a point that when I travel, if I have time, I'll go play. They play good for you. Um, no, this isn't saying that I'm good. <laughs> no, no, you don't have to be that, but that's good for you. Uh, I'm sure in all the years that you were a host playing with these guys, you met some interesting people very, that you played golf with. Very interesting people. And, of course, everybody wants to teach, teach me how to get better, so I've got uh, a, a lot of good tips from a lot of really great players. Yeah, well, that's good. All right. Uh, what benefits do you get, Kim, uh, from being an MMA person? as far as helping you uh, with your golf game. Obviously, fitness uh, is, is a natural, but any other stuff that, that helps you with uh, the mechanics of your swing? Well, there is two sides to this as well. Yes, fitness, and from boxing and using your hips and wrestling, you know, I started using my hips better in golf. Uh, on the bad side, when you're in camp, and you're super strong, you've got to ease up a little bit on everything that you do. I go play basketball, and I'm like overshooting yeah. everything. You know, you, it's like you're too strong yeah, to play, yeah. so you've got to ease up. And then when you're not in camp, you know, your weight as a fighter fluctuates. You get really thin for your fights, you cut weight, and then you go back up 15, 20 pounds. Wow. So wow. You just, it's, it's a lot of adjusting your swing. Yeah. And obviously, how far you can hit with each club, because right. that, that range... It changes a that lot. Varies, yeah. So that's interesting. I didn't know that. Where you had that, where you had that uh, big fluctuation, fluctuation. Mm -hmm. with your with your. Well, speaking of that, how did you get into uh, MMA? Um, I actually started uh, on my own. Uh, a good friend of mine here in town, John Lewis, had a gym. I just got sick of regular workouts. I needed something exciting. I just wasn't interested and motivated. 
So he's like, come check out my gym. And I was, I've always loved boxing. Uh, I went down there and started watching all the guys and jumping in their strength and conditioning workouts mm -hmm. and learning basic boxing and then moved over to jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai. And then I met my ex-husband and the rest is history. You know, we opened up our gym and I was right. surrounded by some of the best talent uh, on the planet in there. So. Well, you had to be in pretty good shape before coming here because, if I'm not mistaken, you were a deputy sheriff before you moved to Las mm -hmm. Vegas, right? So you had to be in some good shape. Yeah, I've always been in good shape. I fluctuate a lot. I'm, I told you earlier I love to cook. Yeah. And especially through the holidays, that's all I do is cook and eat. So, you know, I, I go up 20 pounds and then I shred down and get super lean from my fights. And, you know, I, I'm not crazy about it. So I believe in healthy eating. Yeah. After my fights, I take time off, you know. I get chubby like everybody else does. <laughs> and then I get right back on the program. So oh, That's funny. Strongest part of your golf game? You know, it flip-flopped. Now it's my short game. Okay. It used and to that's be. that's good. That's good. You know, I'd do these tournaments, and I would win longest drive for the females, and it was, my drive was amazing. And, and now with some recent back injuries, uh, my short game's gotten better. And my drive looks like I've never played golf before. <laughs> So it's a very frustrating game, which is why you yeah. keep going back which for more. Which is why you keep going right? back for more. That's right. It's the same with what... MMA. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet. I bet. But at least you don't get hurt that much playing golf. You know what I mean? Get, just your get feelings. Whack. <laughs> just your feelings. That's, uh, that's exactly right. That is exactly right. You mentioned that you've played a number of golf courses here around uh, the Valley. Uh, your favorite that you've played here. And what golf course would you like to play that you haven't had an opportunity to play yet? I would love to play Southern Highlands golf course. Nice. Very hard to get out there. And I just drove out there the other day looking at houses, and it was so beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. They're only, I hear they're only getting five or six tee times a day out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You know, they have, uh, they have a new ownership out there. Oh, do they? Yeah. So they've got, they got a lot going on. And uh, I'll make you a deal if you teach me uh, some moves after the show. Uh, I think we could get us out there to play. Really? The deal? <laughs> it is a deal. <laughs> All right. You you heard it here, folks. You uh, hear, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I've been known to make a mistake uh, once in a while, uh, I, all of your fights, I believe, have been uh, in the ring. What do you think about cage fighting? All, most of mine have been in the cage, actually. Okay, that's what I meant, folks. <laughs> that's what I meant, okay? I meant most of them are in the cage. Uh, I had two in the ring and the rest were in a cage. What do you prefer and why? I prefer the cage. If I was doing kickboxing, I love the ring because that's okay. what it's meant for. But um, uh, there's so many advantages to using the cage to help you. You know, if you're going for a takedown, you can bounce your opponent off of the cage. You get that little ump before you lift them up to slam them. And, there's a few different things. Sometimes if you front kick them and you push them back into the cage, they're going to bounce back. They're going to be throwing something back at you. But there's always that bounce and trapping them using the cage as a wall. With the rings, it's hard because they fall out under the ropes and you, right. the referee has to stop, put you back in the center of the ring in the same position. It's more delays. Interesting. That's a, yeah, that's interesting. But it, yeah, I, I knew that was cage. <laughs> So I'm sure all the people out there following Kim Couture know that I was wrong and that that was good. Tell me a little bit about your workout because it's incredible. Right now I'm just easing back into it, nursing this injury. Um, but normally when I get back in full force, um, I do some cardio in the morning. Then I'll go in for pro practice and I'll follow up with some strength and conditioning. And then I'll go back again at night to do some jujitsu and wrestling. Um, I break it up throughout the day, but it's about six hours total. Um, and sometimes I just, I'm at home and I'm doing some resistant bands. I do a run. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll run long, longer distance two or three times a week. But then when I get to the gym, I'll do sprints on the treadmill. Um, you mix it up. So every day is three different things. Right. And then the next day you right. switch to the other three. Now you mentioned stretch bands. And as you know, flexibility in golf is super, super important. Right. Uh, do you have a regular stretching routine other than the, the strength bands and, and that type of thing? Um, you know, I've tried yoga in the past, but I've taken little bits and pieces of that and some of my own stretching. And I just started working with a new company. It's called CrossCore. Have you ever heard of it? Yes. And yes. CrossCore, and it's, it's for people that have injuries, actually, but it's for everyone. And you can make it as easy or as hard a workout as you want. 
and I'm opening a new business now, and I'm going to be implementing that, their system. I'm getting certified um, nice. here soon. And I love it because I have had a lot of injuries. Yep. Anybody that's seen me fight before, <laughs> I've dealt with some injuries. And, and this last one, I really have to be careful you know, with, with my back. So um, I love it. It's yeah. really good for everyone. Yeah. You have, uh, you're going to be in action uh, coming up pretty soon, aren't you? About five weeks. I have two on the, on the docket right now, um, February 25th and then April 7th. Okay. Nice. So I so better heal it. quick. You got to. <laughs> you got to. You're going to have a chance to maybe get out and hit some. You ever go out and just beat some golf balls, go to the practice tee and I do. chip and putt, hit some golf balls and stuff? Um, not as often as I'd like okay. to now um, with training and trying to open a new business and then traveling. But when I do travel, if I get time off, I yeah. usually try to find the closest golf course and get Have out there. Have you taken uh, any golf instruction from anybody here in town? You know, I took a lesson for about a week up at the uh, Badlands. Okay. And it almost makes you worse. You know, you need oh, to like, does. you need to go consistently. Not almost, it does. But one week, it was enough to change everything yeah. that I was doing before. And I stand up there to hit, and I'm going through a checklist now, and I'm like, where's the off button? You know, I don't want to think that much. Yeah. I just want to hit. Yeah. Yeah. So it definitely. Oh, it does. That's one thing about about, about people that play golf that take lessons. Uh, for some, it's just a, a law of nature, I guess. You always got to get a little worse before it starts kicking in. And <laughs> seriously, and it, it's very frustrating while you're going through it. Right. Very frustrating. And it's the same way with with MMA too. Is it? There's always a point where you kind of plateau and you start getting worse instead of better, and then you get over the hill and you'll start building back up again. So. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> you know that you know that uh, Annika Sorenstan, a couple of other lady professionals, uh, have teed it up against uh, against the men. Uh, you ever see that or see that happening in in your sport? Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> real, I mean, is that realistic at all? You think? No, you know, you. I have seen it in grappling tournaments okay. before. You know, grappling, it's a whole nother world, especially even the little kids. I've seen little girls yeah. beat up little boys. <laughs> um, but no, I don't think in the fighting world, I, I hope that we don't see that. Obviously, men are so much stronger and have so much more power. And, you know, I think the only person that, that probably could have gotten in there and beat some men is uh, Christina Cyborg. Yeah, yeah. The, the women's champ. And yeah. Um, yeah, probably not. All right. All right. Is there a lifespan for uh, MMA people? Yes, I'm at the end of that. Right now. Are you? <laughs> you know, usually they're in their but prime twenties, early thirties, yeah. and um, you know, I just turned thirty-six, so you look I great. Got, I got like a year left. No, in me. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never would have guessed. I'm gonna that. retire and just golf. <laughs> I never, I never. Would you, if if you retired, would you, would you play a lot of golf? Oh, absolutely. I know you really love the game. I do love the game. I just especially in Las Vegas, where else can you be that you're just out surrounded by beautiful plants and trees yeah. and grass and you just feel like you're away from home and yeah. I love the people. You know, it's great to do business on the golf course, of course, and, um, you know, little Bloody Marys now and then never hurt anybody. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. That's, uh, that's very true. Finally, you, uh, as, as Kim alluded to, her uh, former husband, Randy, who was a really big-time guy in the world of MMA world champ, a, a terrific guy. You are involved together in some businesses, aren't you? Well, I still, still promote. I mean, you have a good relationship. Yeah, we have a him. great relationship, yeah. and I still help promote his uh, pharmaceutical company. It's all of the supplements that I still take myself. It was the last business I did before we did divorce, and I still do a push for him every yeah. time I fight. I usually have it on my on my fight shorts and on my banner, and um, I'll probably try to carry those products in my new clinic as well. Because I know he's very supportive of all the stuff you do. Very supportive, yeah. yes. We try to support each other, um, and we're still very close friends. And I still call him for uh, fight advice, too. Could you imagine, folks, the, the arguments that these two must have had? Every, <laughs> it's, not, it's just not your normal husband and wife. Straight, you know, boy. <laughs> we never had any arguments. <laughs> it's we not didn't. healthy Neither not one to of argue. <laughs> no, we, we got along pretty good. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Kim, thank you so much for coming on. By the way, if you want to uh, keep track of Kim, get a hold of her, learn the latest about what she's doing. She's got a great website. 
Kemptour.com. It's under construction right now. It's but. under construction <laughs> right now, so give it a few weeks and then go visit it and they'll give you the latest and, and greatest on, uh, on what's going on with Kim. Thanks again. It's an absolute pleasure. Good luck with your uh, upcoming two fights. Thank you. You're Thanks. welcome. All right, that's going to do it for uh, this edition of Golf and Other Four Letter Words right here on the Vegas Video Network. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and uh, we'll see you right back here, same time, same place, with another great show. So until then, uh, thanks again, and uh, fairways and greens, everybody. We'll see you. So long.